are marching at the dawn of the day. All the darkened kitchens, the mill of gray, are touched by the radiance that the sun discloses. Hello everyone, my name is Sabrina Baggio of, from the Brenner Roses Heritage Festival. I'm here with President Joshua Alba um, and we're here to talk about this year's Labor Day Festival coming to Lawrence on the North Common, Campagnon Common on September 7th. So, hello. <laughs> Can you tell us about um, the festival and its history and in general what the festival is about? Yes, so the Bread and Roses Heritage Festival is named after uh, what's been now called, now known as the Bread and Roses Strike of 1912, otherwise known as the Great Strike of 1912, mm -hmm. where over 30,000, mostly women and children, went on strike in the dead of winter to protest um, for higher pay and uh, dignity and better working conditions in the, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, and they won. Uh, after I think several weeks, if not a month, hmm. probably edit that out. Um, spray, they, they were met with violence from the state. Um, the kids were sent off to, uh, to Vermont and New York and Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and that's what basically broke the state's back, um, mm -hmm. the, corporate's, the corporate people's back. Um, that made national headlines. Long story short, they won the strike, mm -hmm. um, and that's it was the, it was the part of the beginning in this country of the labor movement, and how we got the uh, eight-hour working day, the forty-hour working week, and mm -hmm. child labor laws, and um, safety, and OSHA, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. And this year is the thirty-first year of the festival. Yep, thirty-first, still going strong, and I've been part of it since two thousand seven, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited to continue the heritage and uh, make sure that the, the people today, mm -hmm. uh, the new immigrants, uh, learn from the immigrants from the past mm -hmm. and uh, continue to strive forward. And I think that's what the festival embodies yeah. through entertainment, workshops, and so on. Very good. Mm -hmm. As an Italian and Irish American, mm -hmm. I, something I can definitely appreciate. Um, I know there's a lot of issues that you and I have talked about that mm -hmm. go along with um, the different groups that came over. and. Lawrence is definitely more of a, a mosaic versus a, a mm. melting pot. So the the mm -hmm. festival is a great asset to keep going. Um, as this is the 31st year of the festival, I understand that there's a different like design, a different t-shirt design every year. Mm -hmm. um, I do have some here. And I know this was last year's as designed by Kate Delaney. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, this one, I believe, from the year before. Will we be having a new design this year? Yeah, and the t-shirts are being printed currently. Mm -hmm. And this, this is this year's design. Uh, has a contemporary feel with the modern protesters and the, the air mill and the, the background. Well, the mill is not contemporary, but mm -hmm. the, back, the, the drawing style mm -hmm. with the more vintage kind of Victorian turn of the century kind of feel to it. Um, drawn by Eli Portuhondo. I think he's a young young adult. And uh, the, the committee was very satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he followed uh, what we wanted. And there's a lot of protests going on in the country today. And we wanted to embody that and make sure that people know that this is what the festival's about. Mm -hmm. uh, we're progressive. We uh, talk about labor, labor and social justice issues. Um, come have a good time and learn. Mm -hmm. Very good. And Eli is also a, um, a resident of Lawrence. He grew up in Lawrence. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have um, someone from the area to be able to do the design. Yeah. Um, so we have the 31st year. We have the logo. Again, t-shirts, you said, will be sold at the festival. Yep. They're being printed now. Including the older ones. Right. So those mm -hmm. are definitely becoming collector's items. Yep. as um, oh, yeah. there's a different mm -hmm. design every year. So before we get into like our the musical acts, one of the biggest um, draws to the festival, what else can you find at the Bread and Roses Heritage Festival? Uh, the thing that you did at the Salsa Festival, uh, trolley tours. Mm -hmm. Haven't been on a trolley tour yet, but I heard okay. that the trolley tours were 
um, are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, they only do them two times a year. One is at the Salsa Festival, mm -hmm. um, and the other one's at the Bread and Roses Heritage Festival in North Common. Mm -hmm. um, there'll also be workshops um, as part of the Lawrence History Live tent um, that has contemporary issues being showcased. Last year they did a, a lot of stuff on the Walmart workers, mm -hmm. Brazilian immigrants, um, as well as uh, revisiting the uh, Bread and Roses strike history and what the the uh, um, the Hit Lawrence History Center and keeping up with the the new findings. There's like tons of research being done right now, thanks to people on the festival committee, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the Lawrence History Center um, and their partnerships. Um, there's also Kids Zone, which is huge for kids, uh, being put on by the Humanitarian Club in Lawrence High. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Jonathan Guzman again. Um, that's I think this will be our three year, third year with them rather, um, and they. They go through maybe 200, 300 kids, easy. Mm -hmm. Face painting, mask making, um, all kinds of stuff there. Hula hooping. Mm -hmm. um, what else is there? Oh, there's um, all kinds of uh, ethnic food. Uh, this year we went especially more um, local based. Yeah. Uh, small mom and pop shops instead of like, carnival food and instead of something like more pre-processed food, mm -hmm. uh, which is always great. Um, and there's also going to be a lot of um, community groups, uh, mm -hmm. nonprofit vendors, mm -hmm. uh, arts and craft groups. Uh, I know the Arts and Culture Summit happened, and I hope more of those people show up. Yeah. Um, arts and crafts are being sold there by a bunch of art vendors and craft vendors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the big draw, I think, for me right now that I'm thinking about that I really want to get out is um, the Beehive Collective. Uh, the Beehive Design Collective is a group of uh, young adults that went across uh, Latin and South America, mm -hmm. talking to indigenous peoples, and they, they're a bunch of artists, um, and they put together this mural called Mesoamerica Resiste, uh, Mesoamerica Resists, um, Globalization. And their mural is a two-part on the inside, on the outside, like it folds, closed like a book, like a pamphlet, mm -hmm. and it shows a picture of the world um, and how, like you can see the a pipeline going down through Mexico all the way down to South America, and you see like a ship of McDonald's coming through and like a Nike ship coming in, mm -hmm. and uh, and it just shows the macro picture of what's going on. And there's a lot of details, really, really beautiful drawing. It's huge. It's like nine by nine feet, um, at least. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you flip it open, <clears throat> uh, it's a, a bottom-up view with um, over like 500 different species that have gone extinct in that, in that region of the world because of uh, climate change and globalization and just destroying lands and all that and displacing people. Um, it's, a, it's a really beautiful drawing, a lot of it done by little dot, little dot, dot, dots stipulation or something stipple yeah, stipple, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's uh, it's beautiful and it's it's very detailed um, and very artistic and very uh, and there's like stories in it at two o'clock on the day of the festival they're gonna be doing an actual workshop trying to go through uh, each area of the the mural mm -hmm. um, but they'll be there all day so people can look at it they'll talk to you while you're there um, and just look for the big white uh, sheet um, and just look at it. You could, we could, you could look at it for for a long time, for hours, if not days, right. and, and find something new. I know you and mm -hmm. I got to have mm -hmm. a, a preview of that when they came out to mm -hmm. Altair. Mm -hmm. They made a their trek down from Maine to mm -hmm. kind of share their stories of everyone. So I'm looking forward to that, especially from, you know, the more of the artist side. I know, as a community member, in addition to mm -hmm. like having art like Beehive Collective and the mm -hmm. artist vendors, um, I think it's good to say, depending on when this comes out, that the vendor applications mm. will be due soon. So 10 days. Yes. So on July 31st, for those who are interested in becoming food vendors, arts and craft mm -hmm. vendors, um, we have nonprofit and commercial vendors as well to mm -hmm. just kind of um, basically show your wares to the world. We had about 5,000 people who oh, came yeah. through the festival mm -hmm. last year. So mm -hmm. it's um, whether you are local or from kind of the greater Lawrence area, it's definitely beneficial. So yeah. oh, again, yeah. um, 
they can find the information to become a vendor mm -hmm. on the website, right? So that yep. would be breadandrosesheritage.org. Yep. Very good. We want some Mediterranean food. We love some Indian food. Oh, yeah. Love some, uh, we got Jewish food and Greek food and ice cream. And we're, uh, we're hoping oh. a, a bunch of people come back. Want some Italian food. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got some, some Dominican. came through. Pa we got paninis. <laughs> So a little uh, bit of everything. Every year there's a good amount. Uh, but get your applications in ASAP, please. Yeah, right. Don't let the people yeah. go hungry. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So um, is there anything else that you'd like to share um, about the festival? Did you mention Lawrence History Live? Like you don't have to go into mm. super detail, but just before we get into the music, what else could be found at the festival? Did we cover everything? Um, two stages. Um, Launch History Live area, I said that. Uh, workshops and union representatives talking about mm -hmm. their efforts. We talked about that. Uh, the mural, Kid Zone, Pony Rides. Mm -hmm. Kids love and the that. Trolley rides. Um, yeah. The trolley rides. The trolley rides. All that stuff. Everything's free except for the food and what you buy. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and it's open air on the common. Mm -hmm. um, there's a history and labor section as well with all kinds of unions and uh, people passing out pamphlets for if anybody's looking for more information on how to join in on what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, cool. The info tent is central. If anybody needs help, there'll be a new map with a big eye on it for info tent. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Cool. So who mm -hmm. can we expect to see? What artists, what music mm -hmm. performers will we expect to see at the festival this year? So I'm really excited about I'm excited about all of them, actually, but uh, Angkor Dance Troupe, mm -hmm. I've never seen them live. Uh, I've seen stuff like it on TV, mm. um, but Angkor Dance Troupe is uh, Cambodian performing arts. Um, if you ever seen like the like uh, like, a, like an Asian girl with the gold crown and the nails and everything and all the really ornate gold looking stuff, and there's like a million other girls behind her, and they all put their arms. Mm at a different time um, and it looks like it's all one person fantastic stuff and as I understand it the um, the the performing arts they tell a story um, mm -hmm. like it's like they're part of their history and the, the eras of kingship or I don't even know that much about it but mm -hmm. that it's 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 it tells a story with movement and music and it's really really fascinating and I, I, I think there's gonna be a bunch of guys doing um, like monkey dancers or something like that yep, as yeah. well. I, I'm just super excited to see. Mm -hmm. I just I don't know anything really about that culture, so I'm just like that's awesome opportunity to. Hope I'm not busy and I get to watch it. Right, um, right. But we'll be having uh, squeeze box stompers. Mm -hmm. um, they're a Cajun Zydeco group. They're kind of like um, uh, somebody who's been down to uh, uh, to New Orleans. That it's basically like walking through. Bourbon Street or that sector, I don't know, but it's it's like New Orleans music, mm -hmm. so that's really cool. Um, Saikon is our headliner this year. Uh, huge legendary activist. He's been doing work in the correctional facilities with inmates. He's been uh, organizing labor. He's uh, doing uh, a bunch of stuff with uh, the Appalachian coal mining thing, I believe. Um, they're just blowing off the top of mountains now. Um, huge activist, singer, songwriter, folky. Um, I'm really interested to see what he's gonna say, and I know he's he's down with, with a cause, like hardcore, mm. so I'm really looking forward to talking with him, period, actually. Very cool. So now, Angkor is out of, the Cambodian group out of Lowell. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then you mentioned where Squeezebox from? Squeezebox is from around the area. Okay. Um, Very cool. I think a couple of their members won awards, uh, like the Boston Music Awards and a couple other mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure exactly if they're from New Orleans, but I imagine they have some kind of teaching from there. Right. And, um, oh, at the beginning of the festival, how, how are we going to open the festival? Is oh, there something yeah. different this year that we should be? Yeah, Keeping so, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, usually we start off the festival with, we try to start off the festival with a bang. 
Uh, last year, we literally did that with um, Second Line and Social Aid Pleasure Society, uh, a honk band, and we, we marched through. And you know, for many years, we've been doing that with various different honk bands. Mm. Um, this year, we're doing something really special to get more people to pay attention to the history um, and connect with the common and connect mm -hmm. with like the legacy of, of what being an immigrant stands for. Um, and we're having a, um, on the common right now, on the, the city hall side, there's a new installation within the last two, three years. Uh, the Strikers Monument, the big stone there, it has a, a brass plate or I don't know what that material is, of the Strikers. Mm -hmm. um, and Jonas Stunza um, took it upon himself to, to get that done uh, with a committee of other people. Um, and, and every year he's been doing a commemoration there to recognize the sacrifice and you know the, the courage that these people had to do what they did and, and brought us to where we are today, essentially. Mm -hmm. and, and to also commemorate how that struggle doesn't end, how it's not over yet. Um, last year, with the Market Basket stuff, um, a, lot, a bunch of Market Basket employees came and uh, they had a, a large strike. Um, and, and, and we kind of witnessed a modern day. There was a lot of comparison between the strikers mm -hmm. of 1912 and what they did with Market Basket and the community support um, that came out for them and, and they got it. So mm -hmm. it, it shows the power of uh, people stepping up and um, taking risks. Mm -hmm. there you go. So I have two last points for you. We, we heard how we're mm -hmm. going to open the festival, which I believe is around 1130 at 11 the Strikers 30. Monument. Yep. So that's on the Common Street side mm -hmm. of, of the Common there, right in front of City Hall. Uh, we heard some of our, our headliners. And mm -hmm. then how will we close the festival? I know this is something that we do just about mm -hmm. every year. So mm -hmm. tell us about our last Yeah, act. so we're going to close the festival. There are other performers. you got to check the website for more. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisbeth Perdomo, YMCA Music Clubhouse, and Henry Lappin, O'Shea, mm -hmm. Chaplin, Irish Dancers. Um, but yeah, Bread and Puppet Theater, uh, mm -hmm. one of the last uh, theater groups in the country that still do this with big paper mache masks, mm -hmm. people in like horse costumes and stilts and really fantastic group that they're really dramatic, they're funny, and they speak on political and social issues and labor issues, human issues, mm -hmm. with flair. And everybody enjoys it, everybody I think gets it at one level or another that there's something wrong and, mm -hmm. and, and you can be creative and still be an activist mm -hmm. uh, and, and fight the power essentially with fun. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we've been ending the show um, for over 10 years now, I, I, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and why break it? It's fantastic. It gets the biggest draw. <laughs> nice. Everybody just gathers right there on the lawn. Very good. Mm -hmm. So now how would someone mm -hmm. um, get involved if they want to volunteer? How do they do mm. that? If you want to volunteer, Please email us at volunteer at breadandrosesheritage.org. Mm -hmm. um, there's many positions available for the day of. There's uh, some promotional help that's needed uh, a week or two before. Uh, you could contact, well, volunteer at breadandrosesheritage.org. I may answer the email. Uh, there's training dates actually on the 23rd, Sunday the 23rd and September the 5th at the Lawrence Heritage State Park at 2 o'clock. Um, so get to know the positions that are available, sign up for the one that you want, mm -hmm. and we'll teach you more about it. It's not too hard, it just needs to be done, like passing out flyers, passing out, uh, collecting donations, uh, setting up and breaking down. Um, we need like 150 people, something, 150 people around there to, to really help put this on and um, it's really a team effort and all the help is really appreciated. Very good. Is there anything else you want to share about the festival and, um, before we close off and tell them our contact information? Yeah, the Bread and Roses Heritage Festival is the only labor and social justice festival on the East Coast happening on Labor Day. Mm -hmm. It's big, it's a big deal. It's, it's our heritage, it's uh, our human heritage to fight back reclaim power, do it with fun, music, celebration, 
and, and let's keep pushing forward. And come to the festival and, and enjoy yourself, eat some good food, meet some good community members, and, uh, and dance, please. There you go. Yeah. So again, the website is yeah. Bread and Roses. Mm -hmm. Heritage.org. Uh, we also have the links to our Facebook and Twitter page on there. Um, I believe we're going to create an Instagram account leading up to mm -hmm. the festival as well. Um, so you can follow along. Um, again, it's on Labor Day, September 7th, starting at 11.30 mm -hmm. and going to about 5 or 6 o'clock. Um, again, vendors, artists, food, mm -hmm. commercial, for-profit, non-profit. Um, if you would like to have a space that information is on the website mm -hmm. as well under get involved and the applications are, are there. So the food vendors have to get mm -hmm. their applications in by July 31st mm -hmm. um, and more updates will, will come if needed. Mm -hmm. But very good. Yeah. So cool. as, a, as a committee member of mm -hmm. the Brennan Roses Heritage Festival, thank you for your time. President Joshua Alba. Thank you. <laughs> as we come <laughs> marching. <laughs> At the dawn of the day All the darkened kitchens The nilos gray Are touched by the radiance That the sun discloses Oh, hear the people singing Bread and roses 